The joy of a championship is not promised. It is a pursuit. Yeah. A journey that is demanding and never direct. Every turn, a new challenge. A series of peaks, valleys, rises, wow. and falls. These four teams have hunted the same elusive goal for weeks. Tirelessly, relentlessly, without fear. I won't back down. Now, I'm coming for the play. They've got some juice. Their quest has taken everything to get here. With the final goal just outside their reach. Which team will give even more to earn that joy? The Liberty Bell tolls for one more team. One spot left in Monday's championship game. Notre Dame has been on a season-long sojourn to Philadelphia, seeking that elusive first championship in program history. The Virginia Cavaliers on the doorstep of a dynasty. They've won two of the last three NCAA tournaments, looking to make it three out of four with two more wins. Not long ago, Duke advancing to the Monday championship, beating Penn State in overtime. A controversial ending. Garrett Ledman scoring the game winner in overtime. Replay showed that his foot was in the crease before he shot the ball. There is no replay to override that call. So the call on the field was the call that stood in Duke will play on Championship Monday. And Ishram, Quint Kesnick, three ACC teams remain. Duke, Notre Dame, and Virginia. And for Notre Dame, this journey to Philadelphia, it started on Selection Sunday last May. You remember that? This is a Duke team at the end of last year. They're on a hot streak. They won all sorts of games in a row. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. They're watching the Selection show, and they got snubbed. So they go back to work. They put up the bracket in their lockers, and they've reeled off uh, an incredible season, a really strong season. And the catalyst for Notre Dame Two brothers, last name Cavanaugh, it's Pat and it's Chris. The Pat and Chris Cavanaugh, brothers from Long Island. They set the tone for this Notre Dame team with their production and their passion. They're gonna chase you down and get ground balls. They're gonna score goals with uncommon chemistry. Pat Zatoire, Tom finalist. Chris has put on 25 pounds in his sophomore season. He's got a, a righty rip. They score gritty, they score greasy goals. And when they get things going, it becomes the energy for the entire Fighting Irish lacrosse team. Kavanaugh comes into this game amongst the national leaders in points and assists. That's Pat. Chris is the team's leading goal scorer. Lars Tiffany has made Virginia now a fixture at championship weekend, Kark. Uh, we could throw the D word around if Virginia's the last team standing on Monday. Dynasty. Yes, you can, Anish. They're in search for their third national title in four years. And every dynasty, let's be honest, has a defining player. And that defining player for the Cavaliers is Connor Schellenberger, who is on track to become the school's first four-time first-team All-American. He's the ultimate playmaker with an IQ to master the pick game with spatial awareness. And when defenders play him straight up, he can get to the rack. His strongest suit, though, is his ability to really survey the field and understand if it's dodge or if it's pass. And when it's pass, he does it as well as anyone. He's second nationally in assists per game and has an incredible sixth sense to spot feed teammates like Xander Dixon. He was unstoppable in the quarters against Georgetown. Six goals four assists, his third 10-point game of the season. Kevin Corrigan, the head coach at Notre Dame. This is season 35. He has pretty much built this program from scratch, and this is his best team. Notre Dame went from club to varsity in 81. Coach Corrigan took over in 1988, and he's been sniffing around this big prize for years. This team has no glaring weaknesses, maybe the face-off, but otherwise, from top to bottom, his strongest chance to get out of championship weekend with a gold trophy. This is the third meeting of the season between Notre Dame and Virginia. Oh, 
Virginia's won the first two. Virginia is the only team to beat Notre Dame this season. Colin Hagstrom will take the opening faceoff for Notre Dame. The great Petey LaSalle for Virginia. Great up and down. I'll tell you, relax. Go. Some. Officials today, Brian Luxinger, Tim Luxinger, and Douglas Donovan. And hopefully we do not have to say their names again. Will Donovan off the face-off wings, the All-American, only a freshman, and Notre Dame to work on offense. The star power concentrated in this game, Quint. Years from now, we may look back and say, wow, I can't believe he played in this game, and he played in this game. These are the two highest-scoring offenses. They're led by two maestros. Kark told you about Schellenberger, Pat Cavanaugh for Notre Dame, and the Irish go to work first. Here's Eric Dobson, Notre Dame's top midfielder, with a right hand and a rocket by Dobson. He's a lefty. He goes to the right. One nothing Irish. He's a lefty, and they're daring him to go right. The Irish in the stands are dressed in green. Aiden Blue goes to the rack, gets to the middle of the field. Virginia is going to shame the junior from Florida and force him right. That's not a good idea. A, it's a bad matchup. You've got to get your pole to Dobson. B, if you're going to cover him with a midfielder, somebody else has got to get on their horse and double team him. Make him a passer. Hey, hey, he's down. He's down. All right, guys, down. Notre Dame wins the second faceoff, two for two at the X. A good early sign for the Irish, and it's Colin Hagstrom taking both faceoffs. Third meeting, as you mentioned, Denise. Two very different games. The one at Clockner when the football team, uh, excuse me, Arlotta when the football team showed up, high scoring. The one at Clockner, low scoring and defensive. In goal for Virginia, the sophomore Matthew Nunes. Struggled mid-season. He's been better toward the end of the season. And a shot by Pat Cavanaugh. A save by Nunes. We get a whistle in the crease and now a flag at the end of the play. This should be a loose ball push. This should not be a flag. This should, this should not be a flag. Rebound control so critical. We saw a rebound goal in game one. Chismar Matsui shoved Tevlin into the goal mouth. Not a time serving foul. It's a loose ball push. Tevlin, the Yale transfer, a captain in his lone season with Notre Dame. Here's Chris Cavanaugh. That's that look right there, Anish. Cavanaugh from the upper wing. That's different. They didn't show that last time these two teams played. Bryce Walker now. Yeah! Walker, Texas Ranger. The junior from Austin. 2 nothing Irish. Nunes didn't track this well. He just did not see this come out of the pocket. They get the switch. Out of the pocket, in the yeah! air. It's just not on it. You gotta get down on this and see this in the pocket, off the lift, in the air. Yeah. You see his hands never reacted. And Quint, when we watch Matthew Nunes throughout the course of the season, when he gets hot early, he gets into a groove and feels it. But right now, at the face-off X, I talked to Petey LaSalle yesterday. He told me Lynch is more of a traditional clamp guy. Hagstrom, who won the first two clamps, was the counter. And now Notre Dame kind of mixing it up with Lynch at the draw. And excuse me, that's Jack Simmons with the goal. The Virginia transfer had three last week in the quarterfinal win against Johns Hopkins. Face-off violation on Notre Dame. Virginia ball. Three face-off violations in one half. And the offended team goes man up. 
And this is what Virginia does with Petey LaSala. They keep him out on offense. He's able to dodge. We saw him dodge a pole last week in the win against Georgetown. First touch now for Connor Schellenberger. Marked by Chris Fake. Schellenberger, Chris Feed, Xander Dixon. Denied by Liam Entman. Entman in goal was the winner of the Kelly Award, which goes to the nation's top goalie. How about that for a start? Entman turning quickly on the feed. That's the lifeblood of this Virginia offense. They're a great passing team. They live and die on those crease cuts. And Dixon, who's usually money in the bank, robbed by Entman. Good start. Notre Dame in round one smashed Utah, dropping 20 goals in that game. Took care of Hopkins in the quarterfinal. Dobson again. Both goals so far coming from the Notre Dame midfield. Dobson, two of the place. It's the side of the net. Nunes digs it out for Virginia. A round one win against Richmond in a monsoon. And then in the sequel to Jurassic Park, as it's being called, they handled Georgetown in the quarters. 17 to 14, the final against the Hoyas. Four of the top six on offense for Virginia All-Americans. That's Griffin Schutz, and Entman makes the save. He got a piece, the ball nearly trickled over the line, and then he smothers it in the dirt. So all of a sudden, this field taking a lot of wear and tear. You got dirt on the creases. Virginia in its 10-man ride. That's the lacrosse equivalent of a full-court press. Both of these teams like to play fast. They thrive when it's chaos. What, what I'm, Kark, and you can lend an ear here. Like We watched practices yesterday. Virginia looked great. I thought Notre Dame had a, a really subpar practice. We're talking about practice, though, because they've shown up ready to play. Like, throw that out the window. You don't talk about practice in Philly. You know that. <laughs> Here comes Pat Cavanaugh. Jake Taylor, the whirling dervish. Clark Taylor, the missing piece on attack. Playing so well off the two Kavanaugh brothers. He is. He's been scoring a ton, but it's what he does spatially for the rest of the offense. Tevlin, Noon saw it all the way. That was a nice stop. Punching across to that offside shoulder. Tevlin hitting the, the rocker step effectively. Jeff Connor, Ford White, hauls in the mangonel from Cade Sawstead. Connor has won two championships at Virginia. Talking to him yesterday, he said it feels like just a moon ago when Virginia got here in 2019. They were the Cardiac Cavaliers, the underdog. Different story now, two titles later. Peyton Cormier, he can absorb contact. Skip pass. Shot by Peter Garno, deflected. Comes to Schellenberger behind the cage. His feed is knocked down. Carter Paulette pushing transition for the Irish. Virginia getting looks. Entman off to a good start. Three saves. Pat Kavanaugh against Cade Sawstead. A first team All American. Kavanaugh, shockingly, was a second team All American. I don't know how. These are matchups that so far this season have favored Virginia. The length of Kastner, 6'7, he's number 39. The length of Sawstack, 6'5, he's number 11 in white. This New is Quinn McCann, two way midi. And he throws it away. The more I watch these two play, Anish and Paul, the more I thought Notre Dame's going to have to score in non six on six ways to win this game. That's off the of face offs, using the ride, and scoring in transition or changing the way that they dodge against those two big condors because Pat Kavanaugh and Chris Kavanaugh are quicker guys but they don't use a ton of the field when they dodge they like contact they dodge in tight quarters they're gonna have to long dodge meaning beat these guys in space and start their job dodge 15 yards away from the cage rather than at the five and five areas Liam Entman in cage first team all-american 
ACC Defensive Player of the Year, ACC Goalie of the Year. He started more than 40 games in his career. Simply put, one of the best, if not the best, in the country. And Notre Dame plays a team defense that's conducive to having strong goaltender stats. I'll tell you one thing about Liam. He told me yesterday, this is the type of game that you dream of playing in. Where else would you rather be? You put a lifetime of work into this moment right now. Xander Dixon, he has set Virginia's single season goals record. First Cavalier with 60 in a season. This is Patrick McIntosh. Bounce shot score. Kark, we're not expecting too many bouncers on the surface. We're not. But they haven't been able to solve Entman in the early stages of this first quarter. He's been all out everything. Low, high, but almost like a little bit of a change of pace. A change up shot. McIntosh scored six goals in the regular season against Johns Hopkins. He gets the Cavs on the board. tournament I think it's their most dangerous team in franchise history and yet they don't get in this tournament Pat Kavanaugh, the this team is together and they are nasty sound the bagpipes Notre Dame going to championship weekend in the city of brotherly love Champs now will sit and wait to see if they can make it into the NCAA tournament. Ohio wow. State wow. out of the Big Ten. Isn't the goal to get the best teams to play in the NCAA tournament? I think it's their most dangerous team in franchise history, and yet they don't get in this tournament. Pat Kavanaugh, the back. This team is together, and they are nasty. Sound the bagpipes. Notre Dame going to championship weekend in the city of brotherly love. Philadelphia, the origins of the city's name, Filio to love, Adelphos brother, hence the moniker, and led by the Kavanaugh brothers, Kevin Corrigan has a team capable of dogpiling on Memorial Day. It's been well documented in the lacrosse world, they didn't get in last year. They have gone scorched earth on teams this year. They've handed nine opponents their worst loss of the season. Six wins by double-digit goals, 10 of the 12 wins for Notre Dame by at least five goals. However, Virginia has been their Achilles heel. Cavaliers own the only two wins against Notre Dame this season. And Petey LaSalle maneuvering the sideline and brings it into the attack box for the Cavaliers. Thomas McCarthy. Shot on the run. Score! Grayson Soliday, who tore his ACL in the quarterfinal last year, only to return for opening week this year. This is what separates Petey. He's able to track ground balls, soak contact, and stay on. Notre Dame right now has to play five on five because of the concern. 
concern of Petey LaSalle. But Virginia does a wonderful job, obviously winning faceoffs, and then in the, the sub portion. Okay, so Soliday is a defensive midi, but he stays on and sniffs it out. Petey stays on. Virginia's constantly attacking, whether it's in settled sets, off of faceoffs, on their clear. It's all gas, no breaks, and you see it on that transition goal, that delayed sub goal. Virginia, number one in the nation in goals per game, more than 17 and a half. Notre Dame, close behind at number three, almost 16 goals a game. And for Soliday, sweet pay dirt. After coming back from a knee injury, he smashed the papaya at the end of practice yesterday. The traditional end of week ceremony they have. Their Friday practice does not involve scouting or focusing on the opponent. It's about themselves. Fundamental Friday on the empty net with the 10 man ride. Notre Dame has the backup. Pat Cavanaugh held to just one point last week. No goals, one assist. First time this season he was held below three points by Johns Hopkins. The Blue Jays basically said we're going to shut him off. They did. Notre Dame still won by three. Now Simmons, who had a big game, he was a big invert option. Kavanaugh, there's the trail check by Kastner. 39 in white. Is a matchup problem for almost anybody. His length is. He's six foot seven with a six foot pole, okay? He covers so much ground. Chris Kavanaugh now. Saved by Nunes. Kastner. Could have walked on to the Virginia men's basketball team, but his class schedule conflicted with the team's practice schedule. He has designs on playing college basketball once he's done with lacrosse. Connor shot, saved by Entenman. Entenman's locked in, gentlemen. I'm on that side of the field, and how explosive he is. It's patience, it's calm, and then it's pop. Nunes retreats into the goal. Here come the Irish down the alley. Ben Ramsey. Good looking sophomore out of California. Third team All American. Great transitional midi in the middle of the field. Kavanaugh looking to escape the clutches of Kastner. That's Pat Kavanaugh. Kastner, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year two seasons ago. Called in by McCann. Still time on the shot clock. Notre Dame scored the first two. Virginia responded. Riley Gray now. He had a hat trick in round one. Gets top side, shoots low. Nunes is there. His 200th save of the season and fourth of the game. Nunes looks good now after letting in that soft second goal. Saw that all the way. Clark, Notre Dame doesn't give you a 10-man ride, but sometimes it will feel like it when the Kavanaugh's are hunting. They are pit bulls. They take just as much pride redefending and going after defenders when they're trying to clear as they do scoring goals and getting teammates involved from an offensive perspective. When you talk to them, they actually have defensive moves when they're riding. Schellenberger to Peter Garno. He's got a howitzer from the outside and some shake. Pass, little off target, Griffin shuts, the big sophomore retrieves. Shuts, over to Xander Dixon, dubbed by former teammate John Fox a few years ago, the Slim Reaper. Shot clock inside 10, now Cormier. Double teamed, comes to Schellenberger, left-handed rocket, Shelly the Machine. Practiced that shot hundreds of times in the backyard with his dad, Scott. And earlier in
earlier this season, I spent a day in Charlottesville going over the mechanics. And technically, it's almost flawless. Connor Schellenberger is a right-handed player. It's the double team from Notre Dame, the loose ball, and the snipe by one and one. Sometimes you win the battle. Right there, the double team gets the ball on the carpet, and you lose the war. You see Entman right there, an effective double team. Ball squirts right to the weak side, where Virginia had a three on two. Shelly had time to let this one rip, and you see Entman's overpowered from about eight yards. That shot's only going 84 miles an hour, but when it's from me to you, Anish, uh, it feels like it's going about 120. It's also the release, too. Look how quick it goes from the headspace area to out of his stick. It's like Kesnick on two cups of coffee when we started this morning, Kark. <laughs> Three unanswered by Virginia. Interesting, Quint, as good as these teams are offensively, the last meeting between the two was really a defensive game decided by the Virginia defensive midfield. A lot of goals in transition off of restarts, off of changes of possession. Both teams not very effective in, in subtle sets. Simmons on the roll back, looking for the cutter, Pat Kavanaugh. Now it comes back to Pat Kavanaugh. Feet in front, shot save, rebound, score! Jack Simmons, the former Cavalier, with his second. And we're tied at three. Simmons is on fire late in the season. He is the perpetual optimist. This guy walks around with a smile on his face. He is upbeat all the time. He's a fifth year now in a business program to get that second degree. He just brings joy to the field. Yesterday during their stretching portion, I bumped into him. I was Jack, why always in such a good mood? He smiled and chuckled. He's just he got, got such a, a, a great personality to have around your team. We spoke to him after Notre Dame's quarterfinal win against Johns Hopkins. He said he still roots for Virginia. He's got a lot of friends on the team, friends on the coaching staff. He scored two of the three for the Irish today against his old team. Will Lynch escapes with it for Notre Dame. So Notre Dame already giving Hagstrom and Lynch pretty much even turns against Petey LaSala. You hope that pays off down the road. Hot day, a lot of emotion. Notre Dame has won four of the seven face-offs. Back right! Kastner picking up Pat Kavanaugh. All three goals from Notre Dame have come from the midfield. Dobson, too high. Pat Kavanaugh bounces one, another save by Nunes. If Matthew Nunes is playing well, it almost becomes unfair if you're playing Virginia. Look at this, this is great. That's big time right there. Bodies flying, guys scrapping, guys hustling. They get a reset. There's the late check. Griffin Kologi, 29 and white all over. His brother Kyle, a big part of two championship defenses for Virginia. Griffin transferring over from Turn Richmond back. in the offseason. Final 45 seconds. Chris Cavanaugh now. The Cavanaugh's without a point in this opening quarter. Notre Dame with a 15-9 shot advantage. Nunes has saved to six. Now McCann will go against Connor. McCann inside. 
Missing just wide. Hey, 50. It will stay with Notre Dame. Pat Cavanaugh, five seconds. Finding the cutting Taylor. Backyard lacrosse, boys. That's where this game was developed. Irish nation knows every time a Cavanaugh has the ball, something creative can happen. This is beautiful, Quinn. Uh, given the clock situation, as a defender here, you've just got to bear down and that you know the Kavanaugh's don't give up. They attack every second. It's a spot feed over the shoulder. Taylor's got brilliant hands. Jake Taylor, the senior from Denver. He's picked up the steam lately, had three goals last week against Hopkins. He had five against Utah. He's fought through an ACL injury, and he can make magic happen in, like, a closet. Great in tight spaces. Taylor with his ninth goal of this NCAA tournament. Five in round one, three last week. Two ties, two lead changes. Notre Dame jumped out two zip. Virginia responded with three straight. The Irish, the last two to close the opening quarter. Duke will await the winner of this game on championship Monday. 4-3, Notre Dame after one. So we have this uh, funky drill, we kind of just freestyle. We have one shooter and one passer. Passer just parks in a wing and the, sh the finisher kind of practicing, just getting it off as quickly as possible while also throwing in whatever you think of. It's ridiculous. This is the freelance I talk about every week when you guys are playing and I'm calling the games. It's like your backyard. There's nothing planned here. He does not know where his next step is, right? Yeah, that's what it's all about. Okay, yeah. So we have this uh, funky drill. We kind of just freestyle. We have one shooter and one passer. Passer just parks in a wing and the, sh the finisher kind of practicing just getting it off as quickly as possible while also throwing in whatever you think of. It's ridiculous. This is the freelance I talk about every week when you guys are playing and I'm calling the games. It's like your backyard. There's nothing planned here. He does not know where his next step is, right? Yeah, that's what it's all about. When you train this way, you prepare yourself for unpredictable moments from a creative perspective that give you these type of plays. And when I spent a day in South Bend with the two Kavanaugh's, 
That's in their DNA, in the backyard, every single day. They practiced all those types of moves for moments like this. Down. Seven. Nobody in the history of college lacrosse at the D1 level has taken more face-offs than Petey LaSalla. He wins the opening draw of quarter number two, face-offs even at four piece. Possession advantage to Notre Dame, shot advantage, big time Notre Dame so far. Yeah, I think if you're Virginia offensive coordinator, Sean Kerwin, you're, you're looking at that first, okay, what are the matchups? What, what what's Notre Dame giving us? What is their slide mentality from behind the net or up top? And then he usually dials up Who's answers. On? This Who's is a Virginia on? offense that make outstanding adjustments. There's Petey LaSella. Thomas McConvey named the top midfielder in college lacrosse this year, the Vermont champ transfer. McConvey to Schellenberger. Good look. We're tied at four. That's two now for Schellenberger. You beat Notre Dame goalie Liam Entenmann in two ways. You beat him with ball movement. You get him moving on his line. You get his head going from side to side. And then you beat him with feeds to the crease. Layups and dunks. This is a little bit of both. And you beat him with versatile shooting, Quint. In the first quarter, from a high release standpoint, where did Connor Schellenberger shoot? High. From that same release spot, where does he shoot? Low. He gets Entman, the first team All-American goalie, thinking. Hagstrom this time will battle with LaSala. Jose Boyer off the wing. Over to Tevlin, shoots low. Noons vetoes. Terrific outlet up ahead. Telegraph that shot. Schellenberger the skip. Notre Dame gets back. Ten and White. Dixon. Wow. They tricked the D there a little, didn't they, Nish? Truett Sunderland, one of the top incoming freshmen. Three and White. Being Laviano's old number. Laviano scored a number of clutch goals in his Virginia career, including a couple on championship weekend and had Hall of Fame celebrations for all of them. There's Sunderland, he got top side, Entum in the save. He was going at Hagstrom, the faceoff man. Virginia's done a nice job. They keep LaSalle on and play some offense. Hagstrom then's got to dig in or Lynch and play D and it causes some confusion. Kavanaugh now. Kavanaugh with 74 points for his career. One more. And he'll tie big brother Matt for the most in one season at Notre Dame. Here's Pat Kavanaugh. Gets inside. Noons another save. Matthew Noons after giving up a couple of a couple of goals early he's played well. And now the ride by Notre Dame. Nine saves in the first half for Matthew Nunes. And a great ground ball play by Kate Sawstead. Not to panic there. Q, I go back to 2019, that first Virginia championship under Lars Tiffany. Alex Rode, in some ways like Matthew Nunes, a question mark coming to championship weekend. He ends up being the most outstanding player. Uh, Coach Lars Tiffany pointed out that every single Virginia championship correlates to really strong goalie play. Go back to Rodney Ruhlman. Tillman Johnson. Tillman Johnson, Alex Rode, Kip Turner. It has been a constant. Gittleman. Schellenberger picked up by Donovan. Garno, his shot, not there. Entman got a piece, the shot clock resets. 
Schellenberger against Chris Fake, a five-time All-American. Great skip to Cormier with the catch and finish. You guys are talking about goaltenders, the likes of a Tillman Johnson making those huge stops in critical moments. Well, the Houston native, the sophomore, Matthew Nunes, give this high-octane offense an opportunity to cash in, Quinn. Look at the trust that Schellenberger has in Cormier. The scissors cut. Dixon goes near side. Cormier cuts the back post. That is the bread and butter of this offense. Nobody passes better, feeds better off the dodge than Schellenberger. He's got two options in there. That's a spot feed to space. And Cormier's got super glue in his pocket, man. Everything sticks. 100%. And when you watch Cormier, he does the back pipe cut with his left hand. You think, ah, oh, he's got no angle, but he rips a twister. And Xander Dixon does the same exact thing on the opposite side. Cormier telling us yesterday, he prefers when there are bodies around him and when there's contact. He feels more at home versus catching a ball all alone. And <laughs> Lars Tiffany wrote him a little bit as he was walking by during our conversation saying, yeah, you missed a couple last week, but you were all alone. I was bragging about him all broadcast, how he never drops a ball, and he dropped two he in did. a row. He did. Announcer Jinx. Comes back to X and Dixon. Schellenberger shot canceled by Entman. Really nice, really nice stop there. The way he turns, drives that top hand. Boyer eluding the pursuit. The second midfield for Notre Dame, in my eyes, has kind of come to life late in the year. Here's Simmons, part of that unit. And oftentimes, that's the unit that determines who's the last team standing on Monday. Simmons got topside on Connor, missed the cage. Ball dying near the sideline. It belongs to Virginia. The hustle by Mitchell Whalen. Here's the speedy Evan Zinn, transferred in from Johns Hopkins a couple of years ago. Zinn, Connor, Young, Noah Chismar, Saladay all give you a two-way threat in the midfield for Virginia. Right now, this game been kind of played like uh, in half field sets, mostly, six on six. Here's Ricky Miazon, the former Stanford linebacker. Former number one overall recruit in lacrosse. When 50 touches it, there is an air of anticipation on the Virginia sideline and in the stands. Schellenberger, his pass for Cormier. Donovan had it off the ground. Here comes Notre Dame, now Tevlin. Tevlin feeding inside and a turnover he wanted Taylor. Only the second turnover of the game for the Irish. Tonight, game five of the Western Conference Finals, the Golden Knights of Las Vegas, the Dallas Stars, 8 Eastern tonight on ABC. You see a lot of hockey, lacrosse, crossover. The Kavanaugh brothers and Liam Entman, in fact, played on the same hockey team growing up. McIntosh, he's got a goal at six in a game against Johns Hopkins this year when Peyton Cormier was hurt. Lefty. Got to the left hand. Entman denies it. Donovan off the ground. 81 for Notre Dame. Only a freshman has a chance to be a special player in South Bend, Kark. 
He does. It's his handle. He's an undersized no, no. defender, but boy, oh boy. Ramsey denied by Nunes. And now Nunes catapults it ahead to Cormier. That's something Matthew Nunes does so well. He is such a great trigger man for this Virginia transition game. He's also a, a weapon in their 10-man ride. He's an exceptional athlete for the position, having played you know, normal midfield through ninth grade. Anish, we were talking about Donovan, who has incredible stick skills and handle. He's gassed right now. Dixon looking for the cutter. A little early to be gassed, no? No, he went up and down the full length of the field on a sprint. Had to get caught back on defense, but subbing now. Ramsey. Nobody picks him up. He'll fire and score! Seventh of the season for Ramsey. Ben Most Ramsey of those no goals gassed. coming down the stretch. If Notre Dame's going to win this game today, they're going to have to score in non-traditional ways. Terrific ground ball play by Chris Conlon. Scoops it to himself. Virginia runs to the substitution box. Ben Ramsey doesn't. He sniffs this out. He's disrespected by the point man. And he beats Noon stick side low. Chris, Coach, Matt, thank you. First game went into overtime. Duke knocking off Penn State. Little controversy at the end. The studio crew will get you caught up on how that game finished. This one shaping up to be a good one tied at five as we check in with Paul. Well, defensively, Notre Dame is putting a lot of faith in number seven, Chris Fake. The six-year grad transfer from Yale. He's guarding Connor Schellenberger, and I heard him in the huddle tell his defense, if Schellenberger has the ball X behind the cage, lock off. That means they're worried more about him passing than dodging. And if you're Schellenberger, you can go to the rack and don't expect a quick slide. Yeah, neither of those options sound great if you're a defense against a number one. Chris Fake was a freshman 
and one of the top defenders in the country as a freshman for that Yale 2018 championship team. Ivy League Rookie of the Year from that group. Brian Tevlin, his teammate, they both have Yale degrees. Now they're getting graduate degrees at Notre Dame, and they brought stability and leadership. Akambi shot blocked. They've brought championship pedigree to a team hunting its first title in program history. If Notre Dame were to win, they would face their bet noir in the month of May, Duke, a team that has knocked out Notre Dame in the NCAA tournament five times, starting with that 2010 national championship game. C.J. Costabile scored the game winner in overtime. 2014, Duke beat Notre Dame in the championship as well. And they knocked out Notre Dame three times in the quarterfinals, the latest in 2019. Quick clears against Notre Dame are really important. The longer it goes on, the more the Kavanaugh's can sink their teeth into you. If Virginia is to get to Monday, Duke has hexed Virginia in a way almost unimaginable. Duke has won 22 of the last 24 against Virginia. In the regular season, it's been pure dominance, but Virginia did beat Duke in the national semifinal in 2019 en route to the Cavaliers championship. Schellenberger here now in space. This is a little bit different look for Virginia. This is McIntosh using the Schellenberger pick. Now Boyer picks up Schellenberger. Jose Boyer's brother Keith plays for Duke. Shot clock at 15. Shot and a score. Two for McIntosh. Virginia back on top. Sean Kerwin sees something here, Quint. Seen much more of McIntosh the last two weeks than, say, after he started for Peyton Cormier and when Cormier came back from injury. McIntosh, not a ton of time, but he is making the most of his opportunity today. Getting underneath, sells it just subtly upfield. And the low angle shooting ability of a player with a lot of box lacrosse background from California with a tight finish. Palo Alto, the junior lefty, I mean, strong lefty. This is a young man who's willed his way up the depth chart, okay? Success didn't, wasn't immediate when, when, he, when he showed up in Charlottesville. Look at that twister at the end, the way he brings it in front and throws that past the ear of Entman. Positional versatility is something McIntosh gives you as well. He can slide between attack and midfield. Notre Dame getting the wings involved, and Lynch off the deflection, able to come away with the faceoff. The Irish have held their own at the faceoff X so far. You think about these weekends, Kark, when a great team plays a great team, the top 10 players usually cancel, cancel each other out, and it's usually some unsung hero over the course of the weekend that can emerge and push a team over the top. I agree with you 100%, and it also helps when you have a player like Patrick McIntosh who, who tasted some playing time. You know he wasn't going to stay in that starting role when Cormier came back, but I feel Sean Kerwin, the offensive coordinator, he picks a scab, meaning he just sees what the defense is giving him in the first quarter, and then he always adjusts. So he saw something in that McIntosh opportunity from a dodging perspective. And you're seeing these twister finishers for Virginia. They practice those shots all afternoon long when you watch them through practice. Kerwin was the gentleman you saw in the orange hat on the left of your screen. The last three teams standing, this is no surprise. It's been a flat circle in the ACC this season. Duke has beaten Virginia twice. Virginia has two wins against Notre Dame, and Notre Dame in its only meeting knocked off Duke. Going back to last season, Notre Dame has had Duke's numbers. And take a look at the drop line. 36-2 <laughs> yeah. against the rest of the nation. This was at Arlotta. When the Notre Dame football team showed up in the third quarter, things got tight. 
and Virginia just pulled away. They fed the crease for six goals in that game. Xander Dixon was the hero. Schellenberger had a big game. Then a clock during Charlottesville, a game Cotter and I called. A little less of a, a, a settled game. It was more transitional, up and down and up and down. And, and Virginia scored on odd man rushes on restarts, and Matt Nunes was the hero with 19 saves. The starting attack in that first Virginia win. 10 goals, eight assists, a sock trick for Xander Dixon. And then you mentioned it, that second game, it was 4-4 at halftime. A lot of defensive midfield scoring for Virginia. I, I tell you, I gotta give credit to both these, these schools. The, their home games this year were lit. Arlotta out in South Bend, Indiana, was a weekly festival of lacrosse. They got huge crowds, enthusiastic crowds, and there's no place like Clockner and Charlottesville right now in this game. They're getting the most fans, the most exuberant fans, and when that band shows up and those folks start picnicking on the hill, man, look out. It's been a great scene at both these two schools. What do they both have in common? Smaller venues, they have a berm right opposite the bench where students and fans can stand and enjoy a beautiful day. There's also no football lines on either field, so when you're watching it, whether it's live or on TV, it gives a crisper, better feel. Notre Dame ball, Virginia has won the last six meetings against Notre Dame. Simmons does the dance with Saladay. Now Kavanaugh. Back one. Back one. Simmons inverting was effective against Johns Hopkins. That's when a midfielder goes behind the cage. Simmons hits the pipe. And Saladay wins the hustle to the sideline. Virginia ball. Xander Dixon, multiple goals Dixon. in all but one game this season. And he's running through the midfield with Sunderland, the freshman, down at attack right now. There's Griffin, shuts, Amtrax his defender, beating Cormier, great trail check to affect the shot. Sunderland digs it out. Sunderland, the number two recruit coming out of high school behind Syracuse's Joey Spolina. Here's McConvey against the Notre Dame captain, Tevlin. McConvey with two assists today. Now 69 straight games with a point. Shots backing down. Entman there. Eight saves for Liam Entman. Boyer the other way. Pat Cavanaugh. Looking to shake Kate Sostad. Help coming from Whalen. Rolls back to Boyer. Coach Corgan wanted a timeout. And he uses his final timeout of the first half. Little upset he didn't get it sooner. to the championship game with an overtime win against Penn State earlier today. They'll get the winner of Virginia and Notre Dame. Our season coming to an end. In some ways, this championship weekend field with Virginia, Notre Dame, and Duke. You could kind of see that coming in mid-March in a lot of ways. And you had a sense two of those three teams would be the last two teams standing as they are. NCAA men's lacrosse coverage continues Monday. Championship game 1 Eastern on ESPN. For more information, visit NCAA.com. Pat Cavanaugh was walking off a little gingerly. Looked like he was maybe grabbing that right hamstring after the play. And yeah, there you see, takes a little rocker step. That's not good. Not good at all. He had some cramping issues late in the game last week against Johns Hopkins.
I was just in the huddle, and Pat Cavanaugh is visibly upset right now. And as you mentioned, that hamstring, and he hobbled off into the huddle and just shaking his head. You got to wonder, a player like him who uses that first step and that quickness, that's what his game's all about, the explosiveness off of the first plant foot. If it's a hamstring or if it's a leg injury, you got to wonder how explosive he can be. Huge development. Okay, here's why. He's got 41% of the team's assists. He's there, by a large margin, their best passer. And without him in the lineup, you, you just there's a lack of distributors. Pat Cavanaugh has the three highest single season assist totals in school history. And he's Notre Dame's all time leader in assists as well. And he is not out on the field. Fulton Bayman checks in at attack, two and blue. Notre Dame down a goal. There's Dobson from the midfield. Gets to his left hand and an absolute flamethrower. Jacksonville, Florida. Grew up as a gigantic Tim Tebow fan. 6'5", 235, and when he gets running downhill, you better get out of the way. And I love how he uses the shoulder in the contact, because if you're a left-handed sweeping midi, that's the scout on him. But the physical aspect of this dodge on Mitch Whalen, that size, that speed, and power, but the skill to kind of shake that off, and in one motion, it's the shake away from the defender and the rip. Kark, about eight years ago, there was a 6'4", 6'5", midi for Notre Dame who went ham championship weekend. The Motor City hitman, right? Sergio Perkovic. He had, what, five goals in that overtime loss to Denver in the semifinals? Somewhere in the studio, Bill Tierney remembers exactly what the final tally was. <laughs> Coach, you won the game. You won the next one, too. He should have had an NIL deal for time room bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> we come up on a minute to play. 6-6. Six, six. Five ties, three lead changes. Fifty seconds. Now Schellenberger. Marked by fake. Here's Dixon. Dixon, the eleventh overall pick in the PLL draft. Schellenberger from long range. Save. And Cormier was in the crease. Uh, he hit Cormier, and then Cormier stepped in the crease. Virginia in the 10-man ride. They gotta be careful. If they go 10-man and don't get ball pressure, a long shot is in play, Anisha. Especially late in the half. Notre Dame out of timeouts. Teplin. Now Chris Cavanaugh. Shaded by Sawstead. There's help. Wow. Chris Cavanaugh still without a point in this first half, which comes to an end. And this game's a stalemate. Third meeting of the season between Virginia and Notre Dame. The last time they played, it was tied at halftime. Virginia won in the second half. Cavaliers, the only team to beat the Irish this season. We're tied at six as we check in with Kark. Coach, we saw your leading scorer, Pat Cavanaugh, come off with what appeared to be a lower body injury. If Fulton Bayman goes the distance in the second half, what do we expect from him as a player? Well, I don't have any idea. I don't have any idea what to, what, who's going to play in the second half. You know as much as I do. Defensively, where have you been at your best? Virginia averages 17 goals a game. You held them the sixth. 
Uh, we, we still gave up a couple of the cheap ones that we consider cheap ones on ground balls and stuff around the goal, but it's what they do well. We've got to, we've got to take that away. We've done a good job on them now for, for about the last four halves. We've done a really good job on their six on six. We've got to be smarter in some of the unsettled and transition. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Kevin Corrigan looking to get to the championship game for the third time. Lars Tiffany and Virginia two wins away from their third championship in the last four NCAA tournaments. Tied at six after 30 minutes. Who plays Duke to Chris Connor in Bristol?
Russ, Russ, Russ the Cavs 10. 0 for 7. 0 for 7. We are at least 30 minutes away from figuring out who plays Duke in Monday's national championship game. Kevin Corrigan and his star, Pat Kavanaugh, having a conversation moments ago. Kavanaugh had to come out of the game late in the first half. He was clutching his left hamstring. And Ishraf, Quint Kesnick, Paul Carcaterra will have an update on Pat Kavanaugh momentarily. 6-6 six, six game, two of the best offenses in the country. Defense ruled in that first half. Yeah, I've been really impressed with both goaltenders, Liam Entman and Matt Nunes. And the defenses are winning the individual matchups for the most part on the perimeter. This game's been a lot lower scoring, I think, than anyone would have imagined. You mentioned Matt Nunes, the Virginia goalie, gave up a couple early and then really locked in. Ten stops. Virginia's done a good job of keeping Notre Dame out of the immediate interior, but you know, Nunes is at his best when he's instinctive. And he kind of turns off his mind and using his great athletic ability. The Kavanaugh's have had a struggling game. Pat Kavanaugh here appeared to injure his left hamstring. Uh, he and Chris right now combined 0 of 7. And so his status as their leading point scorer with 73 points, his assists represent 41% of Notre Dame's assists. So if he doesn't play or isn't 100%, huge story. Kark, any update? Yes, well, Pat Cavanaugh leads the country in assists, and he's their quarterback distributor, gets everyone involved. I'm told he is available. What his status is in terms of how long he can go, we'll see. The left hamstring is taped up. He wants to play. He wants to be out on the field with his brother. This is a family that's been involved with this program for 10 years, have been to championship weekend, and he's lived for this moment, so he's gonna give it a go. And I also spoke to Lars Tiffany. He's not thrilled with his defense. He said his slide packages are off. They're letting the Notre Dame midfielders get to the rack without sliding. He said, our slide package right now is Matthew Nunes, who he thinks playing fantastic. Kavanaugh is out there for Notre Dame to begin the third quarter. Petey LaSala, Will Lynch, at the face-off X. And Virginia controls it at Saladay. He's hounded. This is what Notre Dame does. You can win a face-off, they get after you, and they win possession. So people will target Notre Dame's Ooh. overall face-off numbers sometimes as we get a procedure call against the Irish for playing without equipment. But, Kark, we see this a lot. People target Notre Dame's face-off numbers. It's not really a true measure of possessions. No, no, no. no. Oftentimes they're under 50%, but they're always over 50% if you track the possessions off of face-offs because they find ways. Ground balls in the first half. Big advantage for Notre Dame, plus eight. You rarely see Virginia in the minus in that category. Thomas McConvey spins it back to Schellenberger. He'll go at Chris Fake. Now Griffin shuts. Drawing the slide, Donovan gets shuts to the ground, trying to knock the stick out of his hand. Oh, now he knocks the ball out. Donovan, the freshman All-American, shuts looking for help, lost it. Taylor near the sideline. How about that D by Donovan? Man, he's outweighed in that matchup in East by like 80 pounds. 175 against about 230. Measure the heart, it's all that matters. 81 in blue has a lot of tape on his right ankle as well. He's been dehydrated, he's had a cold towel on his neck multiple times. He is going 110%. He's been one of the stars of this Notre Dame defense in the first half. Here's Chris Cavanaugh. Now Dobson. He fires and scores! A hat trick for the lefty from Fleming Island, Florida. The gold trophy for the gold Golden Domers. It'll come their way if they can play D. Well-timed double team, and then you keep your feet. Stay with it. Another double team, and then be relentless. Look at the effort of Donovan, number 81. Chris Fake follows it up. Notre Dame's always been that strong franchise on D. 
Look at this move by Dobson, who's been on fire. He is shot ready right out of that roll. So the momentum when he goes right to left right here, he brings all that torque with him, and there is not a goalie on the planet that is stopping that when he gets that full momentum off the roll. 31st goal of the season for Eric Dobson. All three of his tallies unassisted. Lynch, the face-off win for the Irish. They have neutralized Petey LaSala so far. Why the stoppage there? Due to an equipment issue, we're told. It was not a procedure call for playing without equipment. Now Chris Cavanaugh will initiate from X. Or playing with equipment that doesn't match. <laughs> On the doorstep, Griffin Westland denied. Now Jake Taylor. How'd he miss that, Anish? How did he miss that? He, he faked Noons out so many times, he might have faked himself out. Notre Dame coming in averaging, what, 16 goals a game? Virginia averages 17 and a half goals per game. So this is way under par offensively for both clubs. And these are also two of the best shooting teams in the country. Is this a kick save? This is ridiculous if it is. Watch this. Wow. Wow, off the shoelaces and the post. Are you kidding me? Wow. McConvey. We're talking about the Virginia offense being held to six goals. Leading scoring team in the nation. I think Connor Schellenberger has to be a Dodger based on the way that they're playing. They're shutting off the adjacents when he has the ball. He has to get to the rack. Working the two-man game. Instead, Connor keeps it. Jeff Connor turned away by Entenmann. Race to the sideline, won by Dixon, and Virginia. It's closest to the ball when it goes out of bounds on a shot. Paul, do you get the feeling that Notre Dame is baiting Virginia into scoring unassisted goals? Yes. Schellenberger to Dixon, the Slim Reaper. His 61st of the season, first of the game. Noons, a sophomore from Houston. An exceptional athlete for the position. Dealing with his own defender in his face and impacting his ability to use his hands and really see the ball, kicks it out with his right foot. You can shut off the adjacents. You could have all the plans in the world and bait Virginia like we were discussing prior to this goal. But the windows... They don't have to be big when Schellenberger, the best passer out there, sees a cutting Xander Dixon. What he considers covered and another feeder considers covered are two totally different things. He was covered. Napolitano, 30 in blue. He's got a stick on the gloves, in the numbers. I mean, he is right there. A, most teams don't throw that get pass. It, it, and B, it, who can oh, finish no. that? Dixon, earlier this year, had a six-goal game in South Bend. His 61 goals, a single season Virginia record. Notre Dame winning the ground ball war. That's big. That is big. It was 2 0 Notre Dame, and then since Virginia tied it at two, neither team has led by more than a goal. A pillar of this Virginia program since forever, and I really mean forever, has been ground ball play. Dobson looking for his fourth. They lead the country, or they're right up there every year in ground balls. It's a bit of a misconstrued stat. The raw numbers, total ground balls, it depends a lot on pace of play, but uh, their plus minus is usually pretty high, too. Crease feed, Kavanaugh looking for his first. That one hit the pipe, Evan Zinn, Roomba's the ground ball. 
There's Peter Garno. That's Grayson Soliday. Irish with no luck. Both goalies have played well. Anson at nine saves. Noons at 11. When the pipe is your friend, you know that helps too. Schellenberger against Fake. Eyes up to McIntosh. Save Entenman. He now has double-digit saves. Goes down like a hockey goalie on that one. I'm not sure he saw it clean. There was a lot of traffic, a lot of interference. Nick Harris has to get rid of it. It's picked off by Quentin Matsu, who dumps it back to Nunes. Kark? You know, I'm watching Pat Cavanaugh, and one of his signature moves, or what drives him, is how he rides, and he sprints every single time opposing teams try to clear the ball. He can barely jog. Do he you? has not been a factor on offense in this third quarter at all, and he just jogged to the sideline. You put a shorty on him if he comes back on the field? Why cover him with a Kastner or Sawstead if he's not 100%? I'd rather bump one of those guys up to cover Thompson. Kark, would you short him if he comes back in? The only negative is you take take yourself out of your base defense. Schellenberger hits the crossbar and it finds its way in. I would never short stick him, Quinn. <laughs> I, I mean, the hops in this game, there's been three or four margin plays in the second half that have been incredibly favorable to Virginia. A, a, a kick save, a pipe, and now this? This is like some sick nightmare for Kevin Corrigan. Wow. You see the strength and the explosiveness and the dual threat ability of Connor Schellenberger, who it is a right-handed player. The stick. Yeah, the it went off the stick of Marco Napolitano, number 30 in blue. Unintentional, completely unintentional. Entenmann's on it. It's just one of those goals. I used to love giving up goals like that in practice to get him out of the way. Oh, this is just, these just sting. Gosh. Now you could see Liam Entenmann's reaction. Schellenberger, three goals, two assists today. He gets credit for that one. Connor Schellenberger, for his career, averages six points per game in the NCAA tournament. And you got to remember, that includes a quarterfinal game last year against Maryland where he did not score. He's got a shot at the all-time record if he can keep playing in this tournament, and he's 25 points. Eamon McEnany back in 77. He's at 21 right now. Timmy Goldstein had the same in 87. Ben Reeves in 18 and Grant Eamon in 19. Grant Eamon did that in three games. Here is Simmons. He'll take Noah Chisma Whoa. to X. Simmons two goals today, the former Cavalier. Simmons over to Chris Cavanaugh, now Tevlin. Matsui picks him up. Jalen Seymour, 26 in blue. A factor last week with two goals. Now Pat Cavanaugh got the shorty. And he's having trouble moving, you can tell. Just not the same burst. Tries to dump it off. Kastner vacuums. Kologi to Schellenberger, directing traffic. That's a tough call for Notre Dame here, Kark, because he can play crease attack, but you already have that role with Jake Taylor. Can exactly. you? Exactly. You, you don't need him inside. You need him passing. He's the second best passer, actually statistically the best passer in America. Connor Schellenberger and Pat play? Kavanaugh, the top two. But the issue guarding Schellenberger is midway through the year, he was banged up, so everyone dared him to dodge, but we've seen him on the big stage. When teams play him as a dodger, he punches as a passer. When teams play him as a passer, he's got the answer in terms of dominating one-on-one -on -one matchups since his freshman year. Dixon has Tevlin hung up.
Dixon to shuts. It comes to Boyer. That was uh, a hung situation. Virginia goes into their near disaster spaghetti formation. Conlin digs it out. The Holy Cross transfer. Notre Dame has to get it across before the shot clock hits 60. They do. Here comes Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh beats his man, shoots low. Noons the save. Boyer, the rebound. He didn't shoot it. He'll try to escape. His pass picked off. Saladay launches it up ahead. Unsettled for Virginia. Schellenberger against McCann. Trailers. Schellenberger to Saladay. Fake the great defensive play. Wow. Virginia had a six on three. If they had just paused for a second, they had all sorts of trailers there, but they rushed it. That's where communication on the field is key. And let me tell you, when it's loud in a game like this, you can hardly hear the guy next to you. Quint, in some ways, Notre Dame get, did get a dress rehearsal for this situation last week. Johns Hopkins basically took Pat Cavanaugh out of the game and said, we want the other guys to beat you. Now, the personnel for Virginia far different than Hopkins. Kastner thundering down the other way, looking to play it to the wing, and both teams now getting sloppy in transition for Virginia. Two blown opportunities on back-to-back -back possessions. We learned two things about Notre Dame last week. They can win when the Kavanaugh's don't have magical days, and they can win a 60-minute game because other than a Maryland game that went into overtime, they didn't play any close games this year. What's critical here moving forward is the maturation of Chris Kavanaugh. You're going to have to ask him to assume more of a quarterback role behind the cage, and he hasn't had to be that guy at X, the guy passing and distributing. Today, he will be put in those roles if they win this game. There's no question about it. 50 and blue needs the ball behind the cage more now. Simmons drawing a pole, working on Kaloji, denying top side. Now here's Chris Kavanaugh. Kaloji picked him up momentarily. Virginia recovers. Seymour coming down the alley, runs out of room. Here's Pat Kavanaugh. Bad hamstring and all, he scores. And with that goal, he has tied his brother, Matt Kavanaugh, for the single season points record at Notre Dame. There was a flag down. for Virginia in transition. You wait your whole life for this opportunity. Whether you have two legs or one, the heart of a champion, Pat Kavanaugh understands this moment, and we're tied. or season season on the career list
Great time to be a lacrosse fan. NLL, PLL coming. Championship weekend. Pat Cavanaugh playing on one leg. Tying his brother Matt for most points in a season in Notre Dame history. Cavanaugh with 75 points. Matt Cavanaugh also had 75 back in 2014. That 2014 season for the Irish ended on Memorial Day. Matty Ice, the first family of Notre Dame lacrosse. Quint, when Chris Cavanaugh is done, they could own the Notre Dame record books the way the Powells do at Syracuse, where Mikey's the all-time leading scorer, and then Ryan and Casey are right there behind him. Those records are gravy. Man, a, a win today and on Monday would mean the world to this program still hunting their first NCAA championship. Petey LaSala has had his work cut out for him today. One of the best face-off men of all time. And Notre Dame's done a nice job against him. It's been pretty much even at the X. Paul? It's in the Virginia offensive huddle with Sean Kerwin in. He was surprised at how much of the low crease is available against the Notre Dame defense, Quinn. He said the high crease, they're playing really pressure. That's why you're seeing some of these low angle cuts by Peyton Cormier and Xander Dixon. So look for some low crease action and then a heavy dose of one-on-one -on -one from Connor Schellenberger, who they're essentially daring to be a Dodger more than a passer. The last faceoff win by Virginia was big. It was a three on two faceoff. Notre Dame had the extra man, and Virginia was able to deny Notre Dame possession. You're denying the best man-up unit in the country a chance to score with a man up. It was a gigantic, gigantic face-off win, a man-down face-off win. X, so you X. don't have to face the 62% extra man unit of Notre Dame. Only team in the country north of 60%. And now, back to a six-on-six. Schellenberger marked by Fake. Feeding Cormier on the inside. Second effort is there. Peter Garno. Usually we see Garno from the perimeter that time, right on the crease. And Virginia retakes the lead. Back and forth we go. Quinn, you see how they were going for the low crease initially? Jamming it inside. And if you're Kevin Corrigan, who takes off his hat and, and runs his fingers through his through his hair, like. How many times is this going to happen in this game? These fluke bounces that Virginia's getting inside, whether it's a rebound or a misdirected pass, everything's coming up to the guys in white right there. It's a miss. It's a complete whiff by Cormier. Again, who never drops the ball. That one glances off his glove, and guess who? Cormier, uh, Gar Garno's there. Uh, you talk about a free goal. That's just a, a classic example. And even Entman gets a piece of that. Looks like it grazes his, his, his shaft in between his hands. In this half alone, we have seen Virginia's Matt Nunes make a save from the shoelaces of his foot. We've seen a Virginia goal score off the stick of Marco Napolitano, a Notre Dame defender. And then Cormier has a ball go off the stick. It ends up with Garno, who's right there for the slam dunk. I mean, how many fluke goals are you going to give up in one game, one big game? This isn't the team that you want to have rebound opportunities with Cormier and Dixon, who have such soft hands around the crease area. Dobson's been the guy for Notre Dame today as an isolation. Eight in blue, the big man from Jacksonville, Florida. Dobson driving to the alley, denied by Nunes. Catapults it ahead. Evan Zinn, he's photon fast. Zinn skips it back to the middle, and Dixon now shuts. And wow. tracks McCann. Missed the cage, Notre Dame and Conlon with the backup. Minute 45 to go in the third quarter. Notre Dame at one point led 2-0. 
That is the largest lead by any team. Duke won the first semifinal earlier today against Penn State. That went to overtime. We'll be talking about the ending all weekend. Here's Chris Cavanaugh against Kate Sawstead, first team All American. Now Jalen Seymour. Looking for Simmons. Cavanaugh has to hustle and get it. Cavanaugh, two time to Warton finalist. Now Simmons. Tevlin, one of the dual bagpipers. Pat Cavanaugh again, bouncer, stopped by Means. Beautiful outlet, Connor. Tevlin knocks it loose. Connor recovers. 34 seconds to go, third quarter. Virginia today has led, but they have never had a two goal lead. Seven ties, five lead changes. And a turnover by Virginia, a dozen for them with 12 seconds to go. Take a chance here, be aggressive. Crash the net. Tevlin feeding the crease. Taylor, not this time. The third quarter comes to an end. The Duke Blue Devils await the winner in the championship Monday. Duke and Notre Dame have given us some classic championship games. Duke and Virginia have gave us some classic games on championship weekend. We got a quarter, maybe more, to decide this. throughout a trip to the championship game is on the line Virginia enters the fourth quarter leading 9-8 the Cavaliers have held the Cavanaugh brothers in check two points only one goal on 11 shots Park 
Well, and if you look at the way Pat Kavanaugh is shooting, it's his left hamstring. And when you're a shooter, you transfer the weight from back to front. And if you watch him in that third quarter, he's taking mostly lefty shots. And the reason being, it's a left hamstring injury. He doesn't want to put too much pressure on that left hamstring. If he was shooting right-handed, he would. So you see him right. favoring the hammy by shooting lefty. Now, he is a natural lefty, which does bode well. Out of bounds. It belongs to Notre Dame. The Irish are winning the face-off battle today. Winning the ground ball battle. But their settled offensive sets are kind of stagnant. Honestly, they have, they have two assisted goals. They're not getting multiple pass looks. There's no ball reversal. It's all ISO and a shot. And yet only down one. Chris Cavanaugh against Shawstead. It's a brother Pat. Dobson's had the big game. This one hits the ground. It's scooped up by Cole Kastner, the big 6'7 Colossus. Better idea. Drew a double team, got the ball spinning. Poor execution. Can't drop a ball like that in a game like this. You mentioned it earlier. Pat Cavanaugh accounts for more than 40% of the team's total assists. For Virginia, who needs to step up in this fourth quarter outside of Schellenberger? Xander Dixon has not been much of a factor. Uh, Neither has Cormier. Dixon and Cormier are going to feed off of Shelley if, if Notre Dame gets in the sliding game. But the guys, if Notre Dame's going to be slow to double team, guys like Patrick McIntosh and Griffin Schutz potentially could score some individual, some isolation goals. What about Thomas McCombie? He's the national midi of the year. He's been quiet. He needs to step up. McCombie, a first-round pick in the PLL draft. Two assists, no goals. Four shots. Boyer looking for the takeaway. Gets it. McConvey turned it over. Picked his pocket clean. Boyer's playing with great energy today. Got that Yorktown juice. He wants to play his brother on Monday. Brother Keith, a long stick midi for Duke. Only one goal in the last 15 minutes plus for Notre Dame. The other, I'm sorry. So the other thing I was thinking you need to do with Kavanaugh, if he's not feeling great, start him on the crease and roll him off behind off some off, off some dodges up top. So spin it through him where he's at X and, and the distributor. Kavanaugh at X. Now to his brother Chris. Sawstead. Kavanaugh got underneath. Just missed the cage. And a flag down. And now Chris Kavanaugh slow to get up. That was on white 29. White 29. Illegal body check. One minute. It's Griffin Kologi and the best man up unit in Division I will go to work. But we know Pat Kavanaugh is not at full strength and. Chris Cavanaugh took a spill on that last play. Clark, you've got the best look down on the field. Yeah, when they go to the rack, they don't care about their body. I'll tell you one other thing, too, on the Notre Dame bench. These guys are gassed when they're coming off. Cold towels, the heat. It is hot down here, man. I put sunscreen on, and I look like a tomato. These guys from South Bend are not used to this kind of sun. He had blood dripping down his, his forehead. The red badge of courage. There's Pat Kavanaugh. Second extra man opportunity for Notre Dame today. 0 for 1. Dobson recovers. Virginia packing it in a little. Now pressing out. Almost a hedge. Whistling wide, the backup by Griffin Westland. Left-hander from New Jersey. A couple of years ago, he was second on the team in points. Right, right, left, left. Great right, shot of right. Chris Cavanaugh through the helmet.
Six on six. Notre Dame won for its last 11 shooting. Virginia hasn't sent the six guy on. It should be six on six, and Nunes bails him out. Less than our, our clock wasn't synced with the real penalty time. 100 miles per hour on the last shot. Nunes today, 14 out of 22. He had 19 saves against Notre Dame the last time, a career high. He's really played well in all three games now against the Irish. That's where this, this hot streak basically started in South Bend with that win at a time in the year. And he I just thought he was overthinking it. He was kind of guessing to his offside. Clean that up. Chris Cavanaugh on the That's sideline is covered in blood right now. After that last hit, his face has blood all over it. It's the left eyebrow, almost like an MMA fighter. Shucks gives Virginia a two-goal lead for the first time today. He's a monster as Kavanaugh gets the cut man looking at his forehead. Shuts has left some, some scraps on the table today, and not like Nitty's last night because everything got gobbled up. But this is the first time he's kind of finished the play. And he is a monster because of his physicality at 6'3", 220, only a sophomore. He was the number one player coming out of high school last year. A punishing downhill dodger with a hard shot. Virginia up by two for the first time today. Both Kavanaugh brothers a bit wounded. Chris, a cut to the head. Pat Kavanaugh has been limping since the end of the first half. Chris Kavanaugh just ran back on the field. It was actually his, his right eyebrow area. He was covered in so much blood, I thought it was his left originally. And Manny Merritt, the trainer, the longtime trainer here at Notre Dame. She fixed him up, taped him up. He's back on the field. Simmons goes to work on Whalen. Now Griffin Westland. Pat Cavanaugh gets topside and scores. They had talked since last May about not just getting to championship weekend but delivering that first national title to Notre Dame, and Kavanaugh won't be denied. A three-point afternoon, he now holds the single-season scoring record at Notre Dame. Back right. I think he's been playing possum. You know, you limp around for a while, eventually the defender doesn't respect you, and boom, shot out of the cat, and left-handed gets topside. You know, Anish, you called him a lefty before. He's actually a natural right-handed player, but he has such good ball skills with his left and his right. He's been favoring that left side. And when I was out in South Bend and spent a day with the Kavanaugh's, every single locker had last year's bracket taped to the back of the locker. And it's a reminder, last year's snub was the fuel for this year's fire. Pat Kavanaugh is a big New York Rangers fan, and he wears quite often a 1994 Stanley Cup hat. That was the year the Rangers won it all. And if you remember, there was this taunting refrain that Ranger fans heard that year, 1940. 1940. A reminder of how long it had been. Well, Notre Dame, Kevin Corrigan, the Kavanaugh's, every player, every fan that roots for the program is tired of the taunt. There is no 1940, there's a never. They've never won a national championship. This is a program that while the Notre Dame brand is about as big as it gets in college sports, this lacrosse program had to grow and had to develop. They didn't always have the Big East or the ACC. They languished in the Great Western Lacrosse League for years. They were an outlier geographically. The consensus is, Quentin, we've said it, this is their best chance. 
Petey LaSalle. Not so fast. 11-9 Virginia. Cavaliers eyeing an empire. Talk about an outlier. That's what 23 in white is for Virginia. No player at his position at the faceoff in the NCAA tournament had more goals this season than Petey LaSalle. He operates from all over the offensive zone like a whirling dervish attackman. You got a pair of Fogos going at it. That's like a Braveheart. That's like a mini Braveheart there, Kark. I mean, it's unbelievable. He's got the low center of gravity, his upper body. He's jacked. He was a high school football running back star, tough as nails, and he is just a match-up nightmare because what he does after he wins the face. A yard sale. And it's Noah Chismar out of the Tempest. Noon sets up the clear. Both teams have cleared well. Only one failed clear by each side. Eight and a half to go. A two-goal lead for Virginia. Winner gets Duke on Monday. That game on ESPN, 1 o'clock Eastern. Right here in Philadelphia. Lincoln Financial Field. Attendance today, 32,107. McIntosh gets the Schellenberger pick, and now Virginia gets the matchup. Schellenberger on the short stick, McCann. It's the two-man game they play so well. Schellenberger got top side. Big race. It'll stay with Virginia. Xander Dixon beat Entenmann. Entenmann retreats to the cage. Gotta love it. Got to love it. Every play, every single play matters. McIntosh has two goals today. Strong lefty. Schellenberger setting the pick, no switch. McIntosh looking to feed it back. Here's McConvey. Donovan all over him. McConvey's got to get rid of it. In a sea of blue, it's Conlon. Up ahead to fake. Now they got shuts trapped on defense. Fake dumps it forward for Tevlin, who wisely gets it back to Taylor. And now both teams will try to get their personnel on. Both defenses have been so stubborn in this game. Neither offense has been able to get any tic-tac-toe passing going. A physical pound of flesh kind of game. Dobson's got three goals. Driving pass in, whiffs. Flag down, penalty coming on Virginia. Free possession. Chris Cavanaugh without a point to Brother Pat. Quick stick not there, and Notre Dame will send that extra man unit out there. Dobson does a good job on this drawing this call. He presses hard to the middle with authority. Technical foul, zero white, hold, 30 seconds. Zero white, hold, 30 seconds. Easy call? Absolutely. Evan Zinn in the sin bin. Lethal unit, they use Jeffrey Richard Deli as the hub man inside, zero and blue. And when he gets involved, this unit 
can really hum. Snappy passing. And you've got Dobson Kark with his 13 career man up goals. And if he sets his feet, he's going to let it rip on that radar gun at about 105. I'll take the over. Pat Cavanaugh. Over to Dobson. Ten seconds on the man up. Westland probing. Back to Dobson. Dobson gets it from Pat Cavanaugh. Steps into it. It'll stay with Notre Dame. One second left on the man up. Offline, Virginia has six back out there. Even strength. And a timeout by Lars Tiffany. Virginia with one timeout left. 5.24 to go in quarter number four. The Cavaliers, less than five and a half minutes from playing for a third championship in the Lars Tiffany era. Virginia. So much for luck of the Irish, Quint. It's been Virginia getting the bounces in the second half. Noons with the kick save off the pipe. Double ricochet. Watch what happens here. Off the pipe, off the defender's stick. The unlucky Irish can't buy a break. Oh, Cormier misses it. So what? Garno's there to follow it up. I mean, how many times in a low-scoring game is Kevin Corrigan going to be haunted by just fluky goals? I mean, hard to explain. Paul? I like how Notre Dame isn't completely flipping their offense, and Pat Cavanaugh will still operate from behind, because if you get a good midfield dodge from up top, from someone like an Eric Dobson, and if you kick it to the winger behind and Pat Cavanaugh, he's still fully capable of making that right pass. Dobson's got a short stick. Chris Cavanaugh. That might be a flag. Don't see one. Cavanaugh still looking for his first point. Body save news. Take Chris Cavanaugh working hard. Working really hard in that possession. Notre Dame just 3 of 19 shooting in the second half. Again, I all week long when you break down these two teams you've got to score in transition against virginia they offer some transition opportunities because their middies often beeline to the substitution box and they're six on six defense with with the, the monster two defenders down low is is super tough virginia trying to beat notre dame for a third time this season 
Cavs going slow right here, Anish, right? They're in no rush up two. Kark, you were telling us during the last break, no fatigue a factor for both sides. Yeah, these two-way middies, guys like Jeff Connor on Virginia, Quinn McCann and Brian Tevlin on Notre Dame. The amount of miles they log in a game could be up near six miles a game. And when you're in the heat and when you're emptying the tank with a season on the line, these guys are gassed with cramps and totally emptying the tank. Rare unforced error by Schellenberger, and it's McCann. Disliked that possession immensely. You took your foot off the gas. In the shot clock era, you got to keep playing. Chris Cavanaugh, right hand free, and Noons there, another save. He's up to 17. McConvey's been quiet. Notre Dame's got to press out a bit here and play the ball aggressively. Force the action. Here comes Schutz. And Timmin with the biggest save of the game. A three-goal lead in this game would have been massive. Why would you attack that early in a shot clock? It's exactly what you want if you're Notre Dame, Clark. It's exactly what you want. The door is still wide open. On timeout by Kevin Corrigan. How about that stop by Liam Entman? First team All-American. Grew up on Long Island. Got a start foot with the Massapequa Mud Dogs. A great rec program out on the south shore of Nassau County. And look at him. Just matching up. He presents the wide stance, but I like the way he moves off the line. You see how he that's that subtle shift to his left maintains his balance. And even as he's going down, gets the stick up. Gets the stick up. That, that is a thing of beauty. Antiman continues the proud tradition of goalies at Notre Dame. John and Joey Kemp, Shane Das, Scott Rogers. The winner of this game gets Duke in the championship Monday on ESPN. That's when our NCAA men's lacrosse coverage continues. It's the national championship game. For more information, visit NCAA.com. For Notre Dame, this weekend in a lot of ways set up like an exorcism. They had lost six in a row to Virginia. Virginia the only team to beat Notre Dame this season. If Notre Dame is able to get through Virginia today, they face Duke. Now they've had Duke's number of late, but in the NCAA tournament, starting with the 2010 championship, Duke has beaten Notre Dame five times. Now if Virginia hangs on and wins and plays Duke, it sets up a showdown of the two teams that have won six of the last 13 national championships, but Kark, it has been so lopsided over almost 20 years. Duke has waxed Virginia. They've won 22 of 24 against Virginia in the John Donowski era. Virginia, however, did get Duke in that 2019 national semifinal. It's crazy when you think about that, right? I mean, this is a team since John Donowski took over. Virginia's won national titles, two of the last three. The regular season hex is it's nutty like you can't even explain it to people but look at what happened in 2019 and i think the quick turnaround if virginia can hold the quick turnaround they're not marinating on a week of duke it's two days kark what do you expect to see from notre dame here well they want to get eric dobson the ball they're going to put actually chris cavanaugh behind the cage where pat typically operates and goes after his defender from behind at X. But Dobson's the guy they want having the ball right here. They love the matchup, and they're short-sticking him. I'm shocked that they put a short yes. Evans in on Dobson. They're going to go early. That means they're sliding early. Now, which makes you wonder, when does the slide come? Doorstep feed, Chris Kavanaugh, 11-10. to 10. Dobson read it just like you guys did. And Chris Kavanaugh with his first goal, his first point of this semifinal. This starts with a abbreviated, abbreviated Virginia possession. Looking for a three goal lead. Entman says, no, 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 not today. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. 
You're short sticking this guy. Shot. And I will tell you, I'm shocked too. If you turn on the tape in the area that he's improved the most in 2023 is as a passer. I've seen that through pass multiple times. And when you short him, you're demanding a slide. Whatever that was, it was mass confusion by Virginia. It was almost as if they were playing a zone behind it. And we're going to try to maybe change the look. But that was just poor execution defensively. Now it's Lynch and LaSalle in the limelight. We'll get a hold on Virginia. Notre Dame ball. Lars Tiffany does not like it, and the Irish a chance to tie. It'll be Dobson. All six, five of them. Now Simmons, the quarterfinal hero. Lefty wants his left, capable passer. Dumps it back. Dobson. afternoon both semifinal yeah. games going down to the wire Lynch and LaSalle a hold against Notre Dame since Petey LaSalle stepped on campus Virginia is 11 and 1 in the NCAA tournament he's come up with big plays at the faceoff dot down the stretch and so many crucial semifinal games this time LaSalle not involved Virginia has a timeout Connor Schellenberger five points this afternoon against fake Schellenberg Schellenberger won the flag Peter Garno dumps it behind it to Connor Jeff Connor and Brian Tevlin. Two veterans of championship weekend. Tevlin, the Yale transfer. A Notre Dame captain. Connor. Feeding Cormier missed the cage. Comes back behind. Feeding Frank shot score. McKenzie gives Virginia the lead. It's been that kind of semifinal. And it ended up in the stick of Schellenberger. He gets his third assist. McConvey, the midfielder of the year. His first goal. And now, Notre Dame's got to figure out a way to solve Petey LaSalle. They've done a good job of it all game. Lynch and LaSalle. And it's Lynch. The Irish have a timeout. 
and they use it. 42.1 to go in regulation. Kevin Corrigan, after last week's win against Johns Hopkins, had described this season as a quest. The Golden Domers searching for this El Dorado. It's been elusive, that national championship. A tough road to get there this year, going through Virginia. The one team that matches up better than anybody against Notre Dame. And then you get Duke, who's going to be the more rested team on Monday, regardless of who wins. But they've got a chance, 42 seconds to go. Virginia, Quint, this is a Virginia team that's been in so many of these big spots during this tournament run these last three, four seasons. Two coaching staffs that know each other well. Kark's in that huddle. We'll get an idea of what Coach Corgan's drawn up on that, on that whiteboard, man. He's been diagramming plays for 40 years. There's never been a one that's as important as right now. He's got to trust his instinct. He's got to look in his guy's eyes and get a feel for who wants the ball here. I think it's critical. If Dobson is the initiator, I think he'll draw a crowd of Virginia players. And I would put Pat Kavanaugh in the adjacent spot. Dobson draw the double, click it to Pat Kavanaugh, let him dissect. Well, that's exactly why you keep Kavanaugh in his natural spot, because if Dobson draws, Kavanaugh can still make a pass, bum hamstring or not. But the reality is, Quint, you mentioned Kevin Corrigan in the dry erase board for decades. He has a play that regardless if Virginia goes man or zone, it's the same exact concept in terms of drawing and replacing. They want to give Dobson the ball, but they're expecting some more pressure. And if you're Virginia, you have to pressure eight. He's dominated this fourth quarter. Notre Dame seeking its third trip to the championship game. Down a goal, 42 seconds to go. Virginia looking to get to Memorial Day for the third time in the last four NCAA tournaments. They won in 2019, no tournament in 2020, won again in 2021. You see Dobson on that left wing. Eventually, he will get high. So he'll get a full head of steam and momentum to dodge. Now the long pole, Matsui. This is Tevlin. Over to Taylor. Pinballs off his defender and scores! This is bonkers. This finish by Jake Taylor in this spot with this much pressure is absolute insanity. Tevlin draws. He's got two guys right there. Did you see the subtle move towards the high crease from Jake Taylor? It made it happen, and then it's Twister City. That's even more than a twister. That's a double twister tornado backhanded shot. From the goaltender's view, see if you can follow the ball in the pocket. Nunes just hitches down low. The reaction can't be good. Can't be good. No, not going to be good. Lynch and LaSala once more. Now the wings get in. It's Saladay. Popped into the air. Has some English on it. Donovan looking to scoop it out. It comes to Ramsey, the sophomore, the All-American. Notre Dame out of timeouts. Final seconds. Up ahead to fake. Seven seconds. Fake. Run back to the restraining line. Two seconds. Simmons, time runs out. We go to overtime for the second time today. Is this great or what? There's nobody here sitting down. 
everybody is on their feet. On paper, this matchup had the makings of an all-timer. Pinball wizard, Jake Taylor, tying it late. Next goal wins, we go to OT. Shroff, Quint Kesnick, Paul Carcaterra. Next goal wins. Next goal sends a team to Championship Monday. Nine ties, five lead changes. We check in with Kark. Petey Lasella has taken more face-offs than any player in NCAA history, but today he's been neutralized by a two-headed monster in Notre Dame. But make no mistake about it, he's standing waiting for the face-off right now he's built for these moments in overtime in his career he's six for seven and he has ice in his veins and his competitive nature always shines in these type of moments lasala for his career has 38 goals eight of them coming in the ncaa tournament In 2019, during Virginia's run to the first championship of the Lars Tiffany era, they beat Duke in the semifinals here in Philly in double overtime. Ian Laviano scored the game winner. Lynch and Lasala once more. Salah had it for a moment, lost it. Ground ball. It comes to Lynch. Let's see if Notre Dame uses its timeout. Both teams get a timeout back. And Ramsey brings it into the attack box. That's what you have to do to call a timeout. Kevin Corrigan will try to draw up a play to get Notre Dame to the championship game. Salah looks like he's got an angle on this. Watch his track. The dive. That is a playoff ground ball. That is the definition by Will Donovan of selling out for a ground ball in the playoffs. Watch him leave his feet. Kind of turn the corner on him to make sure he doesn't push him or trip him. And then Lynch does a wonderful job chasing it down. Virginia had a two-goal lead with about two and a half minutes into change to play. A couple of quick ones by Kavanaugh and Dobson tied it at 11. The Cavaliers went ahead with 52 seconds on a McConvey goal before Taylor tied it with 32 seconds. Paul? We've all been talking about the emergence of some of the second-line midfielders. Notre Dame over the course of the last three, four weeks. And Griffin Westland, who is a player, Anish, you mentioned, had a big season two years ago and had to fight to get playing time again. He's probably heading on the field right now, and they think they're going to give him a short stick and work a pick game with one of the Kavanaugh's to hopefully have an exchange where one of them can get the short stick off of the initial Westland shorty. Westland played attack for this group back in 2021. 
put up 31 points. You know, running on the second midfield, the biggest challenge is you don't get steady shifts. So it's hard to stay engaged. It's hard to stay in the flow. I'm not seeing Westland out there right now. I see both Kavanaugh's. Taylor. They switched Simmons and Westland. So look for Simmons. If Simmons has a short stick, he's going to have an exchange with whoever has the pole, whether it's Dobson or a Kavanaugh to get that switch. Tevlin, the party starter. Tevlin driving down, gets free, shoots, and scores! The captain sends Notre Dame to the championship game! Coach, you're the master of the dry erase board. What did you draw up there? Coach, listen, it's not about what I draw up. It's about what those guys do on the field. We had we had three different guys make three different plays in, in the, you know, the last few possessions of the game. All credit to them. Petey LaSalle from Virginia is one of the best face-off specialists the game has seen. How did you neutralize him today? You know, again, 22 just bared down and made plays. Both of our face-off guys did a great job today. Even in the first half, we felt like we missed some First chance ground balls that could have made the numbers even more in our favor. But again, it's just uh, those guys, they made plays. I know you didn't want to talk about Pat Kavanaugh's leg, but I want to talk about the Kavanaugh's guts. One had one leg, one had a face that was split open. How would you describe their toughness? Uh, yeah, they don't quit. They're, they're, you would have had to drag Pat Kavanaugh off the field. There's no way he wasn't going to be there for this. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Bob. It'll be Notre Dame and Duke in the championship game on Monday. This is how it ended. Brian Tevlin, the Renaissance man. He's got an angel. And he's got no fear. Nothing to lose. Got an extra fifth year. He's going to take another team to the national championship by showing uncommon Tevlin this season has worn every hat for this program. Offense, defense, short stick, long pole. He's played face-off wings. He's one of the two bagpipers that leads the team out. Named a captain after transferring from Yale, where he was a national champion as a freshman way back in 2018. Saved a life by donating bone marrow a few years back lost a brother to unspeakable tragedy years ago he's been so selfless and he gets its moment in the final moment of this semifinal for notre dame when he transferred in he asked how can i help what's my role well we're going to have you do everything and at the most important moment of the season tevlin just shows uncommon maturity and poise kark Chris, the guys upstairs are talking about Brian Tevlin and his overtime winning goal. And outside of the goal, the leadership that he's provided this team, what has it meant to you guys? It's everything. That's a credit of his character right there, taking over in a big moment, keeping us calm in the huddle, a calm, cool, and collective. That's what he's all about. He's led us to this moment. He's a, he's a great leader. What was going through your mind when Pat had the hamstring injury? Um, I mean, he's been battling injuries all year, so we've kind of been working with that. But in this situation, semifinal game, it's tough to see. But we went in the locker room, got him taped up. But he's a warrior. He's going to battle through that no matter what. So I'm proud of him. Toughness requires a why. Why are the Kavanaugh's so tough? I mean, Pat showed it today. You never give up on anything you do. 
always work at it. Hard work beats everything. So just never give up is our motto. Your brother Matt's at PLL training camp right now. What do you want to say to him? Uh, I love you, Matt. And I love you, Brent. Good luck, boys. You'll do great things there. Love you, boys. Enjoy this. Thank you. I appreciate it. The city of brotherly love, right? When Tevlin announced his transfer after graduating from Yale, everyone said, you'll, you'll feel his impact in May with that championship pedigree. Well, you talk about nailing that. You, you saw that today, both from him and Chris Fake. But I think this game changed with the Liam Entman save. It was Virginia who had a two-goal lead looking to extend that margin, and Entman made the point-blank save from about two feet and that opened the door. Today's player of the game brought to you by Capital One. It is Brian Tevlin who scored the game-winning goal in overtime. Notre Dame closing the game on a 4-1 spurt. We saw Brian in practice yesterday. Go after a teammate pretty good. Something I, I don't think I've seen on, on championship weekend. He went after Eric Dobson a little in practice to talk louder, to play with more focus and urgency. Guess what happened today? Dobson had a career day. Tevlin scores the game-winning goal. Uh, like, like you know, he hoped it would go. And now it does beg the question. This was a physical bruiser of a game. How much does Notre Dame have left on Monday? How much does Duke have left? They had to go to overtime against Penn State. How much do you have left? Kark, how much you got left? We're going to bring it on Monday at 1 on ESPN. I promise you that. Oh, yeah. This Notre Dame team that had journeyed long, singing a song in search of El Dorado. Well, the city of gold, it's in sights. They're 60 minutes away from a national championship. They're going to have to go through Duke, the number one seed with Brennan O'Neill, one of the game's best players. We're set for championship Monday. It's Notre Dame and Duke in the final, one Eastern Monday on ESPN. We will see you then.